Good morning lads and welcome to another video. Uh, just lean back, put on a game in the background and just listen in while I keep uh, reading this uh, creepypasta, creepypasta from the uh, Creepypasta Wiki, The Russian Sleep Experiment. So let's get started. Russian research in detail... Sorry about that, there will be no cutting in this video. So yeah. Now. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept uh, five people awake for 15 days using an ex experimental gas-based uh, stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to uh, carefully uh, monitor their ox oxygen, oxygen intake for so the gas didn't kill them since it was uh, toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed uh, circuit uh, camera, so they had to had only microphones and five inch thick uh, glass porthole sized windows into uh, the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water and toilet and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they, will, they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations of, and activities were monitored and it was noted uh, that uh, they continued to talk about uh, increasingly traumatic incidents in their past and the general tone of their conversations took on a darker, darker aspect after the four day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and and events that led them to where they are were, and started to demonstrate se severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the experimenters. By uh, I'm sorry, I just uh, jumped over a sentence there. <sighs> they stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they, ha they all seemed to li think uh, they could win the trust of uh, the experimenters by turning over their comrades. The other subjects in captivity uh, with them. Turning in <laughs> over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. What? At first, the uh, researchers suspected this was uh, an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber repeatedly, yelling at the top of his lungs for th three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. The researchers postulated uh, that he uh, had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives uh, reacted to it, or rather didn't react to it. They didn't. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the cap captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took uh, the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped, so did the whispering to the microphones. Hey. After three more days passed, 
the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working. Since they uh, thought it uh, impossible that uh, no sound could be uh, coming with five people inside. The oxygen uh, consumption in the uh, chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was uh, the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of uh, strenuous, exerci strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do to get the a reactions from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to pro, pro uh, hoping to. I can't speak today. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to, hoping to provoke, and respond response from the captives. They were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor, or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of your... one of you... Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice response. We no longer want to be freed. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more re response using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed out the sorry about that the chamber was flushed out flushed out nope the chamber was flushed off the stimulate stimulant gas and filled with fresh air and immediately voices from the microphones began to object Three different voices began begging, as if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the uh, soldiers when they saw uh, what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive. Although no one could could rightly call the state that any of them in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the dead su test subjects, thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the center of the uh, chamber, blocking the drain and allowing uh, four inches of water to uh, accumulate uh, on the floor. Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portion of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the uh, wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth, as the researchers initially, as the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all, of them were self-inflicted. Hey, the abdom abdominal organs below the ribcage of all four test subjects had been removed, while the heart, lungs and diaphragm remained in place. The skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the ribcage. 
all the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. Uh, the uh, digestive tract, tract of all four could be uh, seen to be working digesting food. It quickly became apparent that uh, what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operat operatives at the facility, but uh, still many refused to return to the chamber to remove the uh, test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and uh, alternate alternate they continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on lest they fall asleep to everyone's surprise the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the uh, process of being removed from the chamber one of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat, throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off. And then, it and then an artery in his legs severed by one of the subject's teeth. Oh. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives, if you count ones that committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. Oh! That one must hurt! In this struggle, one of the four living subjects had his uh, spleen ruptured and he bled out uh, almost immediately. The uh, medical researchers attempted to uh, sedate, sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of morphine deriv derivative and still fought like a cornered animal breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor off of one doctor when heart uh, was when heart was seen to beat for a full 2 minutes after he had bled out to the point there was more air in his uh, vascular system than blood. Even after it uh, stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach and just uh, repeating the word more over and over, weaker and weaker, until he finally fell silent. Oh man, this is actually quite a long one. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begged for the gas demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to uh, the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the uh, process of uh, preparing the subject to uh, have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the uh, sedative they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against the, his uh, restraints when the anesthetic uh, gas was brought out to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a 4 inch wide leather strap on one wrist. Even through the weight of uh, a 200 pound soldier holding that wrist as well. It uh, took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under and the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table it was found that his blood had tripled the amount of the uh, triple the normal level of oxygen. 
His muscles that were still attached to his uh, skeleton were badly torn, and he had uh, nine broken bones uh, in his struggle to uh, not be uh, subdued. Most of them were from the force of his own muscles. Was the from the force of his own muscles had exerted on them. The second uh, survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed. He was unable to beg or object to surgery, and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in uh, disapproval when the an anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his uh, head yes when someone suggested reluctantly they tried the surgery without anesthetic and did not uh, react for the entire six hour procedure of, rep of replacing his uh, abdominal organs and attempting to uh, cover them with uh, what remained of his skin. The surgeon uh, presiding stated repeat repeatedly that it should be uh, medically possible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the uh, surgery stated that she had uh, seen the patient's mouth curl into a small smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the uh, surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk whilst, while struggling. Assuming this must be uh, something of uh, drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen uh, and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple, keep cutting. Oy. The other two uh, test subjects were given sa the same surgery, both without the uh, anesthetic as well, although they had to be uh, injected with a paralytic uh, for the duration of the or operation. The surgeon found it uh, impossible to perform the uh, operation while the patient laughed continuously. <laughs> Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The uh, paralytic cleared their system of an ab abnormally short period of time and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had dripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given, I must remain awake. Hui. This is actually a An interesting one. And I'm out of breath just by reading. All three uh, test subjects' restraints were uh, reinforced and they uh, were back into uh, the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of their uh, military benefactors for having failed the uh, stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The uh, commanding officer and uh, ex-KGB instead saw a potential and wanted to uh, see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected but uh, were overruled. In uh, preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling at the moment it was let uh, slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that uh, at this point all three were pulling, all three were putting up a great struggle to uh, stay awake. 
One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject uh, was tr straining his uh, legs against the uh, leather bonds with all his might. First left, then right, then left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was uh, holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. Having been the first to be uh, wired to the EEG, most of the uh, researchers were monitoring his brain waves in uh, surprise. They were normal for most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplic inexplicably. What? Inexplicably. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. It looked as uh, if he were repeatedly suffering brain death before returning to normal. As they focused on uh, paper scrolling out of the uh, brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip uh, shut and at the same moment his uh, head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to uh, that of the deep sleep, then uh, flatlined for the last time as his heart uh, simultaneous, simultaneous, simultaneously stopped. Hard words? It's hard. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to, uh, to, be, to be sealed in now. His brain waves uh, showed the same flat lines as one, of, as one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subject inside, as well as three researchers. One of the uh, named three immediately drew his gun and shot the uh, commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a uh, a bed as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you. He screamed at them. He screamed at the man strapped to the table. What are you? he demanded. I must know. The test subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily? the subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, beginning to uh, be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralyzes when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out. So nearly free. Oh, holy crap. Well, that's it for uh, this time. I will try to uh, post weekly creepypasta on Sundays, but... But I can't promise anything right now. But thank you guys so much for listening in. Um, please do take care. And remember. Look to our